In uh, this uh, brief tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use WebSockets to connect a client in Unreal Engine to a C Sharp server. Uh, in my instance, I'm writing an MMO, and so there's a bunch of grammar related to updating the position of the characters or doing the inventory or combat, all those sorts of things. And so I'm using that uh, 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 WebSockets as a way to have my client talk to the server. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a C++ class uh, that uh, is a subclass of game instance. In my case, it's MMO game instance. And then you'll probably want to create uh, a blueprint copy of that as well uh, in case you want to store certain things uh, related to the game. In, in, uh, so you could subclass it. And then, uh, you know, I have different uh, global variables here that I'm, that I'm using. Um, so the next thing you want to do is set the project settings to be uh, in maps and modes, the game instance class. You want to set that to be either your C++ class or your blueprint class that's your game instance. And then after you set that, you probably need to, uh, to close the editor and reopen it. I find that it frequently crashes if you don't restart the editor. And it'll even crash when you're compiling quite a bit, if, particularly if you're uh, changing U property or U function definitions. Uh, all right, so over in the uh, C++ project, so you, you again, you will need to create a C++ uh, type project. Um, I created uh, um, this MMO game instance class here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is include web sockets in your public dependency modules in your build.cs. So you'll have, you know, whatever the name of your project is, build.cs. And then you'll include web sockets here. Uh, while you're there, you probably want to get the JSON uh, libraries as well, because JSON is, is a great way to pass structured data back and forth. Um, you'll see I have two different kinds of grammar, uh, one for very short messages and then using JSON for more structured stuff like passing inventory or uh, merchant items, those kinds of things. Um, it's, it's just really easy to serialize and deserialize JSON. Uh, in C-sharp and in C++ using these libraries. So highly recommend you do that. In the .h file for your game instance, you're first going to create a WebSocket variable. So uh, T shared pointer I WebSocket. That's going to be the, the socket that connects to the server. You're going to need some includes. Uh, these are the three includes that you need. I WebSocket, Sockets Manager, and Sockets Module. Um, and then you're going to want to implement four functions. Uh, these are the four functions right here, these four U functions. Uh, so when it's connected, when it gets an error, um, when it disconnects, and when a message is received. Really, you're probably mostly going to be concerned with connected and message received. The other two you can kind of handle uh, uh, by yourself as a, as a disconnection error issue, but um, not, not, really, uh, not really used that much. All right, so then in the C++ code, um, you're going to connect to the server. Um, what happens sometimes is that in the uh, runtime version of Unreal Engine, WebSockets is not loaded by default. This might be fixed in Unreal 5, I don't know. But um, you'll want to check to make sure that WebSockets module is loaded. And if it's not, you load it up. Um, and then you're going to do the connect. You can see I have my development and my production servers here. Um, and in a production environment, you will want to use uh, WSS with a certificate for sure, because um, <clears throat> otherwise it would be completely unencrypted. Um, so uh, you basically just uh, put the IP address of the name and then the port number. I'm using 8080 just because that's a convention, but you can really use anything you want. And then I used um, this form of the delegate to add my uh, U function connections. So when the WebSocket gets a connection, it'll call this. When it gets an error, when it's closed, and when I get a message, it calls that. Um, and as long as your function signatures match what this is expecting, everything will work fine. Um, and then I go to uh, go to connect it. Connect to server, I call in loading uh, the first blueprint. Um, so there's like a connection screen, um, and then I just have a blueprint implementable event. Which, uh, which gets called on begin play. Um, so uh, when the WebSocket is connected, I just set a flag to true. 
that's uh, used in the initial connecting screen. So I just keep polling for that on tick until I see server connected is true. And then I say it's, uh, it's fine. If I get an error, then I report to the user, you know, unable to connect to server or whatever else, and then exit the program. So the meat of what you're going to be implementing is in the socket received. You're going to get a string. Uh, one of the nice things about the web socket is that you'll always get a full string. So it's unlike a standard <clears throat> like TCP socket receive where you might get a partial message. Um, the web socket underlying protocol will always guarantee you a full message. You don't have to terminate it with anything, new lines or any of the other stuff. Um, it always will give you whatever you sent on the other side. It will give you completely received uh, on this side. So it's, uh, it's very helpful in that respect. Uh, like I said, I have two different kinds of grammars. So um, if the message just starts with a digit zero, and that's just arbitrary, uh, then I have a four character sort of uh, sub command uh, to um, indicate that it's a, a, a quick thing. So for example, like updating player positions, um, that's something that happens very frequently. And I didn't want to have to serialize and deserialize JSON on every call just to update the player position. It's a very easy fixed format to parse, um, something you're sending you know, probably even hundreds of times a second if there's a lot of players on the server. And so you want to be able to just kind of rip through that really quickly and, and uh, not have to create the whole JSON architecture around that. Uh, for some of the more elaborate messages, um, then I use the JSON. So if it doesn't start with a zero, then I uh, instantiate a JSON object, create this uh, JSON factory, do serialize the message. And then for me, I used the um, action as a, uh, 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 as a variable to indicate what the person is trying to do. And these are all the different kinds of things uh, that, that people can do. So this is the server telling me, um, you know, I want to register a new user, log in, whatever, all these other things. So that's, that's how I implemented it. You can create your own grammar here. You don't have to use JSON if, you know, if your messages are, are simple or different, um, but that's, that's how I did it. So that's pretty much it on the client side. Uh, on the server side, <coughs> I'm using C Sharp and um, I used a, a library called Fleck. You can get it off NuGet. It's very mature. There's lots of updates and commits that are recent. It's, uh, it's lots, lots of people are committing to it. Um, so uh, I've found it to be very, um, very stable. So uh, I would recommend that. Um, when you uh, want to create your server, you basically create this WebSocket server variable. You pass it the URL that you want to bind to. And then you call this start with a Lambda function. Um, and so basically every time a connection comes in, you'll get this new socket, which is the uh, socket referencing the new connection. In my case, since I'm writing an MMO, there's uh, a thread for every connected socket. So I use this kind of paradigm uh, where I'm, I'm uh, uh, creating a new thread start and then using this worker thread to do the processing. In the worker thread, <clears throat> it's kind of the same as what's on the uh, on the client. So there are, uh, in this case, three events that you can respond to. I just created these three lambda messages, uh, three lambda functions. So um, this is when a socket is opened. I don't do anything except debug there. Uh, this is when a socket is closed. So say the client exits the program, um, and this is when a message is received. And then I just call this function call process message. And then I have a main run loop here that does things like periodically pings or does other character updates. Um, and when that thread exits, uh, I then go save my character out, uh, remove him from the level and so on. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because if the client disconnects abnormally, you want to make sure that you save your character state. So uh, in my case, I have this done variable and if uh, I get a um, message error, so when the client disconnects, then I set this done to true so that um, I know that uh, I should go save all, all of the game state for that character. Um, this is again where the bulk of the processing is. So process message, you get a string that's the message. So this is whatever uh, the client sent to the server. 
I use the same sort of paradigm here of if it starts with zero, then I quickly process it. In this case, uh, this would be the client telling the server what position the character's at. Um, and then if not, then it's a JSON-based message and um, go and process all the messages. And again, I'm using this action variable. I'm using uh, Dynamics uh, just because I found it's a little bit easier. But if you have a structured class that you want to use, you can create a class and deserialize that same class every time. Uh, that's really up to you. <clears throat> but I found, again, that using uh, using JSON was was really handy and, and very performant. Um, so that's about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know any questions in the comments below.